So if you're a beginner tennis player, you may be wondering, is it time to buy a new tennis racket? And there is so much information out there about these tennis rackets, it's hard to know where to start. Well, that's the exact problem my friend Jake from the Epic New Tennis Channel Winners Only was wondering. We were talking about when it's time to buy a new racket, what kind of strings you should put in it, what you should be looking for when you buy a new racket. So stay tuned because we are going to be touching base on a ton of the most common beginner questions when it comes to getting a new tennis racket and strings right here. So basically I've seen on your channel, you're like kind of in that 3.0 starting range, you're kicking Trey's ass all the time. Um, but it sounds like your racket's letting you down a little bit. What were you using before? Okay, what is this thing? It's a Prince. Oh wait, Warrior 100. Oh, okay. Prince Warrior 100. Um, How heavy is it? Does it say? String, oh, swing weight, two, 290. Okay, that's the swing weight. So like when you swing it, it's a dynamic measurement. So like it takes into account both where the mass is located on the racket and how much there is. So there's swing weight and there's static weight. Is that say like ounces or grams in there, like 300 grams is kind of what I'm guessing that one is. Gotcha. Um, oh yes, 300 grams. Exactly. Okay, how do you feel about that weight? Um, I mean, I, since I'm a beginner, I can't really tell, but it feels heavy, but maybe that's really light. And I, and but I you know. play other sports, right? Or you have? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you find yourself getting tired, like, in your arm because the racket feels heavy? It definitely, yeah, my, I feel like by the end of a match, I can tell that I need to take a break from gripping because it does feel heavy. Okay, and what's the grip size? Uh, it doesn't, I don't think it says P3. Three, okay, so it's, how does that okay. feel for you? Um, you wanna show me your forehand grip? Can you show me like how much space there is between here? Um, I agree. Yeah, okay, that looks pretty, that looks pretty good. Um, okay. so yeah, do you care about brand or anything? I really don't have a preference. I, like if, uh, the, the thing that I care most about, honestly, is price. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm willing to spend like a good bit of money, but I, like if there's a $200 racket, that's like 90% as good as a $400 racket, then I'd probably rather take the $200 racket. Okay. Like well, there's pretty much no $400 racket so it's still. <laughs> okay. So that's, that's good. good. Is there anything that, um, you feel like that racket helps you do when you play or doesn't let you do when you play? I mean, I, I feel like I shrink a lot of balls, uh, which is probably mostly just because of my experience, but yeah, it just doesn't, uh, like a tray, I forgot what racket he just got, but yeah, I think he got a pretty decent racket. Uh, yeah, I think he's got an extreme, head extreme, yeah. same like me, yeah. It, I can just tell some sort of difference, maybe like when I swing, like it's more aerodynamic or something, or it's lighter, but I can just tell there's like more of a pop with it than with this one. Like this one to me, even when I hit a really good like forehand, it's still, and this could be something with the strings, but it just doesn't feel as uh, poppy, I guess. I don't know if that's a, a thing. Okay, so you like kind of the sensation of the ball like shooting out of the string bed in his racket, whereas yours feels kind of more dead. Yes. Exactly. Okay. I think that's probably the strings because that racket I know is like pretty powerful. Um, okay. There's a huge target market for those kind of rackets, 100 square inch and 300 grams. For people of your level, that's pretty much always my recommendation to start with that anyway. Um, a lot of the time you can find good deals used on Facebook. So if you don't want to spend a lot of money, um, I can send you a list of the names to look for, but you'll want to look for like a Bablat Pure Drive, Bablat Pure Arrow, the Head Extreme like Trey has, um, like a Dunlop FX500 or SX300, a Yonex E-Zone 100 or a um, V-Core 100. So like a huge list and basically all we're looking for is something in your grip size. So grip size three looks to be pretty comfortable for you. 100 square inches, um, 300 grams, 
you could probably go a bit heavier, but since you're feeling tiredness in the arm, I think we should skip that. And then a thicker beam. So like that racket and the Extreme MP, they'll have thicker beams that are kind of around 24 millimeters in beam thickness. Um, so there's a lot of choice. I just put out a video today on the FX500 from Dunlop. It's blue, it's, it's their new power racket. This kind of suspension system that's built into the grommet. So you're gonna get, like I found that it gives a lot of like elastic power and like really shoots that ball out of the string bed. So I think that's kind of the feeling that you're looking for. Dunlop rackets are a really good price too. Definitely cheaper than like Yonex. Do you care about color or anything? Um, I mean, I'd rather it not be like purple, pink or something, but okay. uh, besides that, I'm... Yeah, okay, so I'll show you this one. It's blue. Yeah, I wanna see. Blue, it's like relatively plain. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. Goes with like any string. If you're gonna buy like a new 100 square inch racket, I would really heavily consider this one. But there's tons of stuff used, and if you're not sure, you can just send me the listing and I can confirm it for you. I appreciate it. Wait, so is this one 100? Okay, so. Yeah. So then if this is like pretty much exactly what, like the 100 square inches, 300, like, do you think there's gonna be a big difference if I, like, this racket versus getting like the the Dunlop one that you said? No, there's nothing wrong with your racket other than the broken strings. There's no reason why you couldn't just throw new strings in there. You're gonna feel way more power, way more control, way more spin. Like, do you know when that thing was strung last? Like, probably eight years ago. <laughs> Seven, yeah, five, that's yeah. why you like Trey's racket, because he has brand new strings, and those strings are like completely over by now. Um, how, how often should I replace my strings? So how much are you, how many hours per week are you getting out there? I'm probably going to start getting like, I hope, like eight hours a week. But eight hours a week. Lot. Okay, you should string every week. Every week? Yeah. Wow, okay, this is eye-opening stuff right here. Uh, Don't tell Trey, because now you'll have a good advantage. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Wait, okay, that's that's so funny, because, yeah, every time I've hit this thing, it just, it's horrible. But that makes sense, it's just like, I, I literally haven't had this strong in at least five years. <laughs> okay, and then, I guess, I mean, I've played with this for like five years without stripping it. So, like every week is probably, with, like is every two weeks fine or something like yeah, that? Yeah, like every two weeks is fine. Like every okay. eight years is fine. Like you don't have yeah. to like kill yourself over not getting it strung. If you can do yeah. every week, you might yeah. as well. Do you know what kind of strings are in there right now? I do not. Can is you there a way to tell? show me where it broke? Uh, I don't know if... Is it fraying? Like, are there little strings inside or is it just one chunk and is it black all the way through? Yeah, it's black all the way through. Okay, so that's a some kind of polyester string. Uh -huh. um, it's probably like Bablat RPM Blast. I don't think that's right for your level quite yet. You're getting close uh -huh. to, to having the kind of swing speeds where polyester string is gonna be good. Um, the reason that polyester string is so popular, especially with the pros, is it's got this snapback feature. So when the ball hits the string bed, the strings bend downwards and then they shoot back up as the ball leaves the string bed. It kind of kicks up the back of the ball and adds spin. But you need to really like be swinging really hard on every shot for that to do anything. And when you're in position and you're set up, that's when you're swinging hard enough, but kind of at your level, I would say it's what one in three shots that you feel like you're set up and ready and hitting a full shot the way you want. So I would go with a nylon string. My favorite nylon string, it's pretty reasonable price, would be Head Velocity MLT. It's got a really soft, uh, slippery coating, so you do get that kind of snapback, and I recommend it in the black color because you'll really, it's the slipperiest, so you get the most spin, but you can see it discoloring and turning white, and that's when you go, okay, I need to put new strings. Gotcha. How much, how much uh, so the head velocity, okay. Mm -hmm. um, how much does it cost usually, like what's an average restring? 
it's right. very regional. So, so in Vancouver, it was like 20 bucks minimum. That's how much it cost here in, um, I'm in Winnipeg right now. Like you can get it as low as $10 for labor. Um, so like, where are you? I'm in Austin, Texas. Um, yeah, I'm guessing it'll be like decently cheap. Yeah. So like yeah, with the U S dollars, you, I would try to avoid spending more than um 15 bucks yeah so that would be like 15 20 for labor plus i think velo velocity in canada is like 20 bucks so maybe it's 15 bucks um yeah. there do you know where to go um so there's a tennis shop that a, a tennis retail store that seems pretty good or there's like a tennis center near me that has restrain so I was okay. There potentially. There's also an app, um, and they like paid me to like tell people about them, but they're not paying me now. Anyway, so there's this app, and I think the company is based out of Texas. It's called Direct Tennis, and it's supposed to link like home stringers and stuff to players. Um, so you can check that out. But otherwise, I'd go to the store often. It's hit and miss with rec centers and clubs. Um, sometimes it's just like their coach that they get to do stuff and they some coaches are really good and like my coach here is really good and he's going to indian wells later this week to string for all the pros there but sometimes they're just phoning it in and you get a horrible job or they don't know or they don't have stock um so i would try the store first and if you find you're breaking it too quickly you can put a polyester string in the mains so those would be the strings going this way so you'll have two different kinds Okay. Are polyester strings more expensive? No. Um, okay. Polyester and nylon strings are the two primary materials that you'll encounter. Mm -hmm. There are different, I would say nylon strings, you're more likely to get what you pay for. So the expensive nylons like seem to actually have more research and technology in them. With polyester strings, the more expensive ones are not necessarily better. So gotcha. like two of the most popular ones would be like Nadal's string rpm blast or like what federer used which was luxlon alu power those i would not buy those because most people only get like an hour of good tension maintenance out of them and then after that hour elapses the string loosens up a lot uh, okay yeah that makes sense so yeah when i'm telling someone to to string, do I like tell them anything specific or is, is it just kind of one way for everyone? So you'll go, you'll ask for the kind of string you want and then they will say, what tension do you want? If you don't know, they'll probably look at your rackets manufacturer's recommended tension. So like 50 to 57 and go in the middle. And tension does not matter that much. Like there's no best tension, there's no correct tension. Like if you look at the pros, there's guys, there's tons of guys stringing 50, 40, whatever. That's like normal. There's a couple exceptions of guys like Dustin Brown. I don't know if you've seen the guy with the dreadlocks. He strings like, I think at like 70, but Adrian Manorino a couple weeks ago in Delray Beach was seen stringing at 19 pounds, which is almost like not even pulling tension. So the lower you, string the higher the ball is going to launch out of the string bed and the tighter the lower it will launch gotcha okay what do you have so i just string everything at 52. i have a brand partnership with a company called grapple snake um, their usa distribution is based out of nevada the reason that i work with them is because i found that they have way better tension maintenance than any of the other strings that i've tried so i'm getting like 10 hours of like a good solid 10 hours of play where the string feels really consistent and the same and then kind of at the end of those 10 hours the string has notched too much so i'm not getting that snap back because there's more friction gotcha okay this is super, super helpful. Um, Although I just bought a stringing machine myself, so I'm gonna be doing my own rackets for the channel finally. Um, oh, nice. So that's something that you can look into at some point. Um, a decent stringing machine will probably go about a thousand bucks. And then if you're stringing for all your buddies, 
a lot of people end up ahead after a year or two. And how long does it, like, if I go to a tennis shop, how long should I expect it to take to get my racket back? It depends on how busy they are, right? So a good stringer should be able to do any racket in 30 minutes or less. It's better to do it faster because um, the longer the racket's on the machine, the more tension you'll lose out of the job but sometimes they're backed up. Like if tennis is popular in your area or the weather, I think the weather's nice all the time there, right? But then maybe they have 10 rackets a day to do anyway, so you're kind of at the back of the line. Um, gotcha. I would hope you wouldn't wait more than two days. Gotcha, okay, that's super helpful. One other question. So like right now, I'm, I really am just kind of depending on one racket. So like if I go take it in, I won't be able to play until I get it back. Do you think I should get like a backup racket that might be different than this one or if i do you kind of need to stick to like your same like if i got another racket that's 100 grams and uh or 300 grams yeah. and 100 inches so tennis is pretty hard sport even like after like i've been playing for 15 years even after 15 years i find i step on court and i have to like readjust my game a little bit I think the more you can minimize those adjustments session to session, the easier it is for you to increase your level and have fun playing. So if you can't, like, your channel's more about game improvement than it is wasting time testing rackets like my channel. So I would try to just use the same, same string, same racket every single time. I find testing all these rackets like my game goes to shit because I have no idea what I'm doing at the time. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, that is super helpful. Thanks. Well, this is awesome. So if you're not exactly sure where to start, I do have a written article in the description below that really details every single point we touched on today for shopping for a new beginner tennis racket. And if you're looking for some personalized help from me, I offer racket consultations on my website. Here you'll answer a bunch of questions about your tennis playing experience. I go through it, analyze it, process it using all of my tennis knowledge and I'll develop a series of options for you, including some explanations on why I think those rackets would be good choices compared to the competition. I don't get paid by any of the manufacturers yet, so I really only care about finding what's best for you. Helping people have more fun on the court by picking the best gear or having a fun time doing it is one of my passions, and that's why 10Com exists. So check out those racket consultations below and we'll see you next time.